a suicide or something more tonight. More than a year after Grace Holland died in Creve Corps, questions linger over the fatal single gunshot to the head. Whether the 35 year old took her own life all depends on who you ask. Her family claims there has been a cover up, but police say that is simply not so. Tonight, News 4 investigates peels back the layers of this complex case. 911 location of your emergency. July 22nd, 2020, a 911 call from this house in Creve Coeur. My fiance just shot herself. Shot, your fiance just shot herself? Yes. The beginning of a nightmare for one local family. Yeah, it's hard to live in a world without her. Laura Holland is Grace Holland's identical twin sister. It's, it's hard. It's hard to see her and her little girls. But what has made it all harder, she says, is what has happened since. I felt like she's not being treated as a victim here. I, I, I felt like you know, our family wasn't being heard at all. The police, Grace's family believes, have not done enough because of what they were initially told and who told them. I'm a captain with the fire district. I feel like that he's being protected because of who he is. From the very first hour, I started asking questions. Grace's father, Graham Holland, has since made it his mission to question the police. I mean, is it bad leadership or is it bad training or is it complacency? Piercing together what happened before and after Grace's death. There's all these little, little idiosyncrasies and, and, you know, singularly they don't mean a lot, but when you start to put them together, it does mean a lot. It's no secret Grace's four year relationship with her fiance was very rocky. A captain at a fire department neighboring Creve Corps, News 4 is not naming him since he is not considered a person of interest or a suspect. We'll call him John Doe and John afterwards. I don't want to be around you. Tonight. Why not? I don't want to be around you, period. A video reportedly taken by Grace weeks before her death appears to show John wanted out of their relationship. I love you. I hope you have a good day. Okay? F yourself. Okay? F you and dozens of pages of text messages provided to police by John's lawyer also indicate significant trouble in the relationship. Grace often pleading to get married, he wanting to be done all together. In the months leading up to her death, according to the text between them, Grace had been pregnant. One exchange reads, quote, please stop telling me to kill myself, to which John replies, you asked me and I do not want to marry you and I do not want this baby. At times, he's encouraged her to seek an abortion. Instead, it appears from their text, Grace may have had a miscarriage. John told police at the scene, quote, she was depressed. We lost a baby. It's the second miscarriage and she was very depressed and I did not want to try another round. He told them she shot herself in the head right in front of him. Could that possibly be a motive? A motive for what? For harming someone. Uh, you know, I think it's a stretch to say a motive for wanting to break off a relationship is a motive for murder. We sat down with Creve Corps Police Chief Jeffrey Hartman. For us to be able to call this a murder, we'd have to have some evidence that it was a murder and it's just not there. He says he's confident in the investigation that was done, coming to the conclusion it was suicide. The medical examiner also ruling the same. The gun, the coroner says, was placed directly to Grace's head. What we have and what we know for certain is all point in one direction, self-inflicted. Grace's family acknowledges she had struggled with postpartum depression in the past. And just two months before her death, police say a witness found her crying and holding a handgun. A person's mental health history and their past attempts at suicide and the methods they try are all going to be factors that factor in. But Grace's family says things just don't add up. There's all these little things that the police didn't do. In May this year, John was interviewed on video by the police over a separate investigation involving claims of missing jewelry. But while he was formally questioned after Grace's death, the chief acknowledges that video was inadvertently erased due to an error with the department's recording system. John's phone was never seized, police say, because he wasn't a suspect. Though they were reportedly together all night and according to John had been intimate, Grace's phone records obtained by Graham, not the police, show she called him repeatedly back to back within just an hour or so of her death. Why would you call someone who's sleeping next to you on the phone? 
Police, Grace's family notes, did not perform any DNA tests on Grace's gun. Chief Hartman says that wouldn't have been helpful because John was also known to have access to it. The police also didn't do gunshot residue testing on either Grace's or John's hands. Chief Hartman telling us those types of tests aren't reliable anymore. Just the presence of gunshot residue does not prove that you pulled the trigger, and that's the problem. The chief um, is wrong. The uh, gunshot residue is a pertinent piece of information. Timothy Williams was with the Los Angeles Police Department for nearly 30 years, serving many years as a homicide detective. We provided him the police and coroner's reports. 911 location of your emergency. Even the 911 call to review. It's a mortal injury. He questions John's calmness on the call and the couple's past. Based on your review, would you deem this a suicide? No. There's too many questions. That, 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 that I have as an investigator that have not been answered. Grace, who was right-handed, was shot on her left side. The police report saying the gun was found near her right hand, but on the left side of her body. You got more questions than answers. And here's perhaps one of the biggest questions of all. No suicide note was found at the scene. Instead, John told police he found two suicide notes in his briefcase the day after Grace's death. Problem is, Grace's family says they look nothing like her handwriting. These are probably two different authors. News 4 gave numerous samples of Grace's handwriting provided by her family to handwriting expert Marcel Elfers. But the first thing that you notice, it's the writing is entirely different. His analysis, it is likely someone else wrote the suicide notes. Only signatures from the note and from Grace's previous divorce paperwork, he says, have some similarities. He says more information is needed to get a definitive answer. There is enough evidence to at least say we need to investigate this. Looking at everything now, you still have no indication that this was a murder. Still not, right. The chief says the case is still open for two reasons. They are consulting their own handwriting expert now, and they are awaiting results from the FBI on Grace's phone. Given the family's concerns, would you consider allowing another agency to come in and conduct a top-to-bottom investi investigation? I'm not opposed to it. I need to have some compelling evidence that uh, there were some major failures in this. And uh, I just don't, I don't see that. There are some clerical errors in this report for sure, but that doesn't uh, amount to a failure in the investigation. He denies any allegation that his officers would engage in a cover-up or even be too close to a fire captain. I know our investigators are going to do the right thing. I wouldn't wish what we've gone through in the past year upon anyone. But Grace's family says they're still not satisfied, continuing to fight for answers. Somebody has to. You know, maybe there's somebody else's daughter out there I can save. <laughs> because of the family's concerns, in February this year, Creve Corps police provided the case file to investigators at the St. Louis County Prosecutor's Office who arrived at the same conclusion, suicide. Now, though, after we called them, the prosecutor's office recently met with Grace's family just in the last few days. A spokesperson saying there is no statute of limitations on homicide, so if anyone has additional information about Grace's death, they should come forward. Also very important to note here, Corey, we reached out to the attorney that represents the fiance, John, in this story. He told us they had no comment. And Lauren, let's go back to that gunshot residue testing. There is some dispute there. Yeah, that's a really interesting point here. The law enforcement community has different views about whether or not it's actually helpful in a case like this. Creve Corps police say they have even stopped carrying the kits altogether because they don't think that they are reliable. So I asked St. Louis County Police. They have not used gunshot residue testing in several years. St. Louis City Police confirmed they do use that type of testing in certain cases for both homicides and suicides. And the Missouri Highway Patrol Crime Lab says they perform GSR testing routinely on hundreds of cases per year. They say it is reliable to determine whether a suspect fired a gun. But they also say if someone is in the vicinity of a shooting, the residue would be present. And so it wouldn't be informative in that situation. Of course, the time, though, to do any residue testing in Grace's case is now long gone. There's a lot of unanswered questions here, as you can certainly see. And of course, we are going to stay on top of it. There is a lot of questions, but one thing is for sure, it's a tragedy. Yes, for sure. absolutely. Life lost. All right.